I'm very often asking this question in an interview and it looks like everybody knows what Solid is. And developers say, yeah, single responsibility, open closed. It's like when you inject a service into the constructor. Yeah, correctly wrong. <laughs> and this is what distinguishes an architect or a senior developer from a junior developer. Understanding how and where to apply these principles. And it doesn't really matter what technology you are using. Front-end or back-end, what programming language, what framework. This is applicable everywhere, especially in the object-oriented languages. So if you not simply learn by heart what the letters mean, but really understand and keep in your mind these principles, you will be able to build a maintainable and clean system and keep the time and complexity of adding new features constant over time. So let us now dive in into the first letter S, which means single responsibility. Okay, so for the single responsibility, imagine this Swiss army knife, which has a lot of tools, which can do a lot of tasks, but none of them it can really do good. Okay, and if we take another set of tools where each tool is replaceable, each tool does only one thing and does it best. This is much better than this one. And the same applies to all constructions of angular or any other program programming language that a component should only do one thing and this is a good example of violation of single responsibility principle where a component is fetching data a component is formatting user and the fetching logic should be ideally extracted into a service and formatting should be extracted into the pipe and what component should do is just show the data and if we take it to another level Ideally, the components should be dummy. It means that components should take some input and emit some output, have no logic, no dependencies, just pure data flow. Then it's maintainable and uh, the component can be exchanged at any time. The next principle is open-close principle, which means open for extension, but closed for modification. It means that if we modify some class, we may affect the old functionality and it may become unmaintainable. What we should do instead is just extend this class and add additional functionality on the top of it or override its functionality where we need. However, in the front end, especially in Angular, extending components is not a really good idea because you can extend the class, yes, but you don't extend the component decorator, you don't extend the template. And this is one of my favorite questions for the interviews that how can you extend a component? And many developers say, yeah, you can extend the class and it will, and you can just uh, extend the functionality, but <laughs> then I ask, how can you extend the template? And th the answer is you can't, so it's not really a good idea. And this is how you distinguish a senior developer who has a lot of experience in Angular from a junior developer. So in the front end, in Angular, association is much better than extension or inheritance. Because with association, you just reuse the component and wrap the functionality around it or you can also pass the ng content inside and this means that the component will be better testable better modular and there will be no confusion with extended templates and other things from the component decorator but of course inheritance works for service as well and you can extend services call the super methods and override the methods the third principle is Liskov substitution principle and it may sound difficult but it's, in fact it's not. It means that subtypes must be substitutable for their base types without altering the correctness of a program. Let's assume your application has credit card payment system implemented and now you have to switch it to crypto payments. And the interface for credit card payments and crypto payments may be very different. So if you want to switch it, if you only depend on credit card payments, you may need other parameters, you may need to resolve them somehow, and this will change all of the application and the refactoring of it will look like a maze. So your business logic, which depended on card payments, now has to depend on crypto payments, and it will be very strongly affected by this refactoring. So you will, you will have to change it all over the application. The right way to do it is to depend on an abstract interface, and if you exchange card payments with crypto payments, the business logic and even this interface should not be affected at all. And the way to do it with Angular, which also makes this framework stand out among all other front-end frameworks, in my opinion, is to create an injection token and an abstract interface and create two separate services which both implement this interface, but each in its own way. So the implementation will be different. And when you want to call the payments, you just inject the abstract interface with this injection token and simply call the interface so you don't have to know what kind of payments it uses under the hood. 
And if you want to switch card payments to crypto payments, all you have to do is just to change this reference of a class when you provide the, the ejection token. The fourth principle is interface segregation or in simple terms, interface separation. And you might think, okay, these are both interactive elements. So let us create an interactive interface, which has an on hover and on click method, right? Everything is correct. And then you start implementing the tooltip and you say, okay, on hover, I can open the tooltip and on click, because you are forced to implement all the methods from the interactive interface and on click what i do here because there is no click in the tooltip so you may have to leave this method empty and this will be confusing for developers who are reading this for the first time and this will cause your code look something like this and this is what we want to avoid the right way to do it is to create separate interfaces for hoverable where you implement the hover method and for clickable with on click method this means we segregate so we separate the two interfaces and then when you implement the hoverable for a tooltip, you don't need this on click method anymore. Last but not least is the dependency inversion. Yeah, and for D, which says dependency inversion, and when you ask this question in an interview, developers say dependency injection. Actually, it in part of it involves dependency injection, but it's not only about dependency injection. Dependency inversion, if you, if you notice, the arrows are going here in opposite sides, which means we invert the dependencies. And if you remember the example with payment logic, where we had to switch the credit card payments with the crypto payments, this is also applicable there. So you only should depend on an abstract interface and you don't care how many implementations there are of this interface, what is hidden under the hood. But if you switch these implementations or you change them or you refactor them, nothing should change in the business logic. And even here, nothing should change. So the goal is to always keep the business logic safe. So now that you know everything about solid principles and if you would get asked this questionnaire interview and you will answer it like this, interview finished, you are accepted right away. And if you found this video helpful, press a like button, subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching.